Okay, here's a pretty card my friend sent me. Thanks, Susan. This is about Acts 15, I believe. Sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, Let's go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. So let's go back to the visit the believers in the towns where we were. So here's Paul and Barnabas. They're going to visit all the towns where the word was preached. The believers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord. Here's one town, and here's another town with an old person, men, women, young people. And they're going to go town to town and see how they're doing. How are you doing? Paul and Barnabas asked them. Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark, with them, but Paul didn't think it wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. John, also called Mark, and Barnabas, said, let's take him. Let's take John. And Paul didn't think that was a good idea. That's not wise. Because John had deserted them in Pamphylia. John and Pamphlet, he left, and he did not continue in the work. So this is a popular passage with Christians because Paul and Barnabas were so close, and then they are getting separate from their disagreement about Mark. But they continue on with their ministry. They had such a sharp disagreement, argument, very strong, that they parted company and split up. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and left. So Barnabas took Mark and went to Cyprus, and Silas took Paul. Paul chose Silas and left, commended by the believers to the grace of God. So I guess they ch they went, decided with Paul, I'm not sure. The, what the church elders decided, but they split up and they still continued their ministry. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches, Acts 15, 41. There's a strong church with muscles. Hopefully uh, the church now is getting stronger and stronger. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. That's Acts 69. So in the middle of the night, Paul, during the night, Paul was sleeping, or maybe he was up, I don't know. There was a man from Macedonia begging Standing begging, come over to Macedonia and help us. Please, please, please. So, I guess to Philippi, we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of them listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God. So, I guess they're on their way to Macedonia. Let's go. They go to Troas, to Samothrace, to Neapolis. And then they stayed for several days in Philippi in Acts sixteen fourteen. On the Sabbath day, we began, began to speak to the women. And there, one of them was listening. She was a, from a Lydia. And she was a dealer in purple cloth. So I should <clears throat> color her purple right there. She was a worshiper of God. The 
Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul. So her heart was open and she was listening. We would all have our hearts open and listening. And her family and household were baptized. Cool, cool, cool. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her house. So I believe it's Paul and Luke is with him. I'm not sure, but he's kind of quiet. But she invited us to her home. Acts 16, 14. They go to Lydia's house, which is a great honor. You have found me to be faithful. Come to my house and stay. May we be hospitable like Lydia once this is over. Acts 16, 16. Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting. So they were going to the place of prayer, and they were met by a female slave, somebody who's trapped and serving somebody else, doesn't get paid. She had a spirit. There's them going to the house of prayer, place of prayer. She had a fortune-telling spirit in her. Scary. And it's Paul and the rest of us going to the place of prayer. And the, this lady, this female slave, was shouting, Ha-ha! These men are servants of the Most High who are telling you to be saved. Hey, these are servants. Blah, blah, blah. Must she talking about it at her top of her voice. It's probably embarrassing. She kept this up for many days distracting embarrassing and distracting yeah. finally Paul became so annoyed he was bothered by it that he turned around and said to the spirit so Paul is irritated annoyed mad I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her so in Jesus name we can command spirits to leave the fortune telling spirit left goodbye So we want to get the devil and the spirits out of out of us, out of our area, out of the world. God is in control. But when her masters saw, saw their hope of profit was gone, they seized Pilate, Paul, and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace and to the authorities. Acts sixteen sixteen. So once they saw there was no more money that the spirit had left her and she couldn't tell the future or tell fortunes so her masters her owner got mad and seized Paul and Silas and dragged him to the marketplace and to the authorities so here's the marketplace where they're selling things and the authorities are there these men being Jews exceedingly trouble our city and they teach customs which are not lawful for us being Romans, to receive or observe. So these are Jewish men, and they cause trouble in our city greatly. They teach traditions or customs which aren't lawful, which aren't obedient for us. Be because we are Romans, we can't receive or observe them. So get Paul and Silas. The crowd joined the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When we received these orders, he put them when he received his orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet feet in stocks. So the crowd, many people, joined the attack against Paul and Silas and the leaders ordered them to be stripped, take your clothes off, and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged or hit with whips, I guess rods too, or sticks, they were thrown into prison. So they were stripped and beaten, thrown into prison. And the 
jailer, I should put a picture here. The jailer, the guard, was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell, inside cells, not the outside, where they could escape more easily. He put fastened their feet into stocks. In the stocks. And that's the maybe like handcuffs or foot cuffs. I don't know what you call them. They hold your they hold you so you don't escape. So here's Paul and Silas in the inner room, inner cell. They're singing hymns and prayers at midnight, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Acts 16, 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, songs, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a violent earthquake, everything shaking very strongly, that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asks, Sir, what must I do to be saved? So they're sitting in jail scene, and it's about midnight, and an earthquake happens. This is like an earthquake, the Richter scale. Big earthquake, and the doors come loose. The door opened this up, flew open, and the chains came loose. Sorry, I should do chains right here that they're being loose. And so the jail... The jailer woke up and he saw the prison doors open. He drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought they had escaped. But Paul shouted, Hey, don't do that. We're here. So Paul says, Do yourself no harm, for we are here, all here. So it must have been really dark, I think. And... The guards called for the lights and rushed in, and trembling before Paul trembles, shaken, he said, he brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Sirs, what must I do to be saved? The prison guard wakes up and is about to kill himself because he, if his prisoner escaped, he would probably be killed, like the last prisoners with Peter, the last soldiers they replied believe in the lord jesus and you will be saved you and all your house so what should we do to be saved and he said believe in the lord jesus and you will be saved you and your household so we all need to do that believe in the lord jesus i believe in you god help me with my unbelief somebody said and they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others at the house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. So Paul and Silas spoke the word of the Lord to them and to all the others at the house. He took them, I guess he took them to the house and washed their wounds. And they had been flogged. Blech. We don't want infection. Or we don't want it to get worse. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. So very quickly, I wonder how they did it in a river or a bucket. He and all his household were baptized. And I wonder what time this is. Morning time maybe? The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his household. 
So he was filled with joy. He said, come in, guys, have, have a meal with us. So there's a lot of hospitality and food and fellowship. So here's the second time I drew the picture, Acts 1632, or this situation. They spoke the word of God to him and all the others in his house. So they're in the house, and they speak the word of the Lord to him. And at that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. So there he is, washing their wounds, helping them feel better. And immediately, all he and all his family were baptized, and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. Acts 16.35, when it was daylight, the magistrates sent their officers to the jailer with orders, release these men, release those men. I think they're Romans, or Paul was a Roman citizen. So the magistrates said, go to the jailer. Officers, go to the jailer and say, release these men. And there's the keys, open the door. The jailer told Paul, the magistrates have ordered that you and Silas be released. Go in peace. Now you can leave. So this wasn't like before when Peter was in jail and uh, Herod got mad and killed the sentries. Paul was released. Paul and Silas, go in peace. You can leave. But Paul said to the officers, hey, they beat us publicly without a trial even though we are Roman citizens and threw us into prison, and now do they want to get rid of us quietly? No, let them come themselves and escort us out. <laughs> so Paul's kind of offended and talk, talks back. Hey, you did this without a trial? How dare you? You want to get rid of us quietly? No, come let's get us yourselves and escort us out. So I guess they went back to the jail after the meal at the guard's home. So they said, leave quietly. Shh. No, no. Come and get us yourself, said Paul and Silas. At least Paul. <laughs> Acts 16.38. The officers reported this to the magistrates, and when they heard that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens, they were alarmed. So the magistrate said, the officers came back and reported it. The Romans? Oh, no. They're very important people. We are in trouble. They came to appease them or beg them to please them and escorted them from the prison, requesting them to leave the city. Please leave. Please, please, please appease them. After Paul and Silas came out of the prison, they went to Lydia's house where they met with the brothers and sisters and encouraged them. Then they left. So Lydia's the Christian. I don't know if she's a new Christian or, or what, but uh, she was the, worked with Purple Fabrics. So Paul and Silas said, Let us encourage you, brethren. So some people are encouraging and some people are not, especially on Facebook. I won't say who, but <laughs> Paul and Silas encouraged them and then moved on, brothers and sisters, brethren, the house, and they left. Okay, well, let's talk about this next time. They're going to go to different synagogues and speak, and God's going to move them all over the world. Have a good, blessed day.